Hello, I'm Paul Lefevre, the Real Software Developer Evangelist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use web styles to adjust the look and feel of the various controls that are included in Real Studio's Web Edition. As you can see looking at this project right here, you might recognize some controls, but they look a little different than usual. At the top there's a toolbar. Here we have a button, a label, a list box, and a rectangle control. And as you see looking at these, the button doesn't look like your typical button. The label has different color and a larger font. The list box has uh, these wide borders on the side and has a, a line that is uh, got a larger font than the other lines. The rectangle changes colors as the mouse moves over it and when I click on it. And the toolbar also has a different color with a uh, different color for the uh, the text. So let's take a look at how you would do this using Real Studio. First I'll create a new web project. And on the default page, which I'll give a nice name here, I'm going to add some of the controls to demonstrate how styles work. So I'll start simply by putting a label. And I'll change its text. Now you can see the label is here on the window in the normal uh, color, font, black, nothing too fancy. And if you look at the properties, you can see there's nothing here to change the font size, the, um, the, the color of the font, or, any, or anything really. So how do you do that? Well you do that using a style. So if I go to the project tab, I can click the add style button here on the toolbar. This is also available in the project add menu. This adds a style object to your project. I'm going to give it the name Label Style. And when I double click on it, you'll see the Style Editor. At the top, there are four selections for how the styles are used Normal, when the mouse hovers over it, when the mouse is pressed on it, and after uh, it has been clicked, or uh, that's usually referred to as visited. And if you click the Add Property button here, you get a menu of all the different uh, properties you can set in your style that will apply to the control. For the label, uh, very useful is going to be these text and font items. So I can click on any one of them and it'll add the appropriate um, property to the list here so that I can modify it. So if I want to make the font a little bigger, I can specify that I want it to be 125% of its normal size. I can also specify the color say I want to make it red, I'll just slide the slider over to here. Now when I go back to the window, looking at the properties, you can see at the very bottom there's a style section. When I click on the drop down, all the styles in the project are going to appear. Right now we still only have a label style, so I'll pick that. And you'll see that the the uh, the web page updates to show how it would look using the style. Going back to the style, we can take a look at all the other settings that are available. Not all the settings will necessarily apply to every control, um, so you might need to play around a little bit to see what, uh, what does work. Text alignment allows you to center the text and font style allows you to set bold, italic, underline, strikeout, and overline. So I'm going to bold this. So now you can see what this looks like here. One other cool thing you can do with styles is inherit from them. So if I add another style and set it super to label style, and I'll give this a name 
label italic style. What I want to do is to use everything that is in the style we've already created, but change it so that it also displays the text as italic. So I can simply do that by just selecting the property I want to modify and selecting the two properties I want. So this is going to essentially override the, the font style property that's in the label style, which only has bold selected. If I go back to the style, the, uh, the page, I can see the label and I can change its style. And you can see here that it's now displayed in italic. And I go back to the original one, the italic goes away. So this allows you to give some pretty uh, serious uh, control over the look and feel of your uh, web application. Because you can come up with a style that is commonly used for, say, all the headers on your various pages. And then if it turns out that you need to change your headers, you can just go change it in one place on the style and not have to worry about it it'll change everywhere throughout your application. So let's just do a quick run of this so you can see what it looks like. And as you can see it looks pretty much the same as in the designer. Now let's take a look at some of the other controls that we can modify here. I'm gonna add a button to the page and we'll just put this over here on the side and I'll make its text say something simple like find. All right, well, when you normally run a button, at least when it's running in Safari on OS X, when you run a project that has a button, uh, this is what your button looks like. That's a little generic, so let's change that. I'm going to add another style. Call it button style. and I'll double click on it to bring up the style editor here and what I want to do is uh, control a variety of settings uh, first I want to add control how the border is so I'm going to add borders the border properties here so I'll add all four and I'm gonna go back to the page and now I can assign the style to it button style so some of the changes as we make them will start to appear there if I run this right now you'll see the button is now square because we specifically added borders to it let's curve those corners a little bit back here on the button style I can add the uh, corner radii properties and set these up here and I'll just have them uh, set them to 25 to make a slight curve on them now when I run the project you can see the button has curves Next, I want to change the background and the color of the text. And I do that using the text color property to change the color of the text. And the color of the text I want is going to be uh, yellowish. So I'm just going to paste the hex value right in here and you can see it move the sliders for me automatically and then the background is here at the bottom and for this I'm going to use a bluish color and you can see when I go back to the web page that it's showing me what this is going to look like so I now have a bluish background with a yellowish uh, color for the text if I run the project you'll see it looks the same thing in the browser uh, but the text is a little too big it's kind of bumping against the bottom here so I'm going to shrink that a little bit and I'll add a font size 
and I will leave it at percent and set it to something a little smaller, say 85 percent. And now when I run the project, that looks a little bit better. Other things you can do is you'll notice right now when I move the mouse around, there's no indication about anything that this is clickable or anything like that. So using the other properties of the style, I could make the background change as the mouse goes over it, or I could change the text color, or I could uh, do more with the borders. So I'm just going to play around with changing the, the background color ever so slightly. So I'm going to click here on the hover segment, and this is what is going to get changed when the mouse hovers over the control. And I'll add the background. And we'll put the color we used back in here. But we'll actually we'll tweak it, we'll make it get a little darker when the mouse hovers over it. Oops, we don't need to save that just yet. Let's run it. And you can see as I move the mouse over the button, the color changes from its uh, lighter bluish to a darker blue. And you have complete control over that. If you you know you can change the colors, you can play around with pretty much anything you want, and it's all nicely handled automatically. You don't have to write any code or whatnot. So that's a button. Let's take a look at the list box. I'm going to drag a list box over here. And I'll add a couple rows of sample data. So now I have a list box with three rows. As with the other controls, there's a style property at the bottom that allows you to control some of the look and feel of the list box. Uh, so one thing that I can quickly do here is I can add um, a fatter border around it. So let's uh, add another style. Now I'll call it list box style. And I'm going to add a left border and make it a little bigger. So I'll make it five pixels. And I'm going to add a right border and also make it a little bigger. Now I can go back to the web page, click on the list box, and pick the style. And you can see the border appears here on the left and the right. You can also actually apply a style to individual rows, actually individual cells of the list box. So let's create a style that will make uh, the size, the, the font size, bigger for one of these cells. So I'll add a new style and I'll call it list box cell style. And I'm going to add font size and I'll make it a little bit bigger, 125%. and go back to the styles page. Now if you look at the properties, you don't see anything here related to cell styles. That's because you actually have to set it in code. So I'm going to double click on the list box and go to the shown event. And here I can use the cell style property to assign the style. Now when I run the project, you can see that the, the second row has a larger font than the other two rows, and that's because of the style. And you can do this for any or all uh, styles in the list box. Going back to the styles page, Lastly, I'll show you the toolbar. I'll drag a toolbar in here. Add a couple buttons.
These don't need icons. In which case I'll make the toolbar a little smaller. So there you have a, a standard uh, toolbar. And again, if you look at the properties on the right, you'll see that there's all kinds of settings for styles on the toolbar. You can have a style for the toolbar as a whole and styles for uh, the buttons themselves and what happens when they're selected and whatnot. So I'm just going to create a generic style for the toolbar. And I'm going to give it a background color that matches the background color we use for the button. So I'm going to copy this hex value. And I'm also going to give it a text color that also matches uh, the color we use. Oh, we didn't change the text button color. Let's do that now to make that match a little nicer. I'm going to use a yellowish color for the text for both the button and the toolbar. So you can see the little yellow uh, hint here that's mixed in with the blue. Now I'll click on the toolbar and I'm going to pick our toolbar style right here. And you can see that it took the, the, uh, the blue background. It did not pick up the, the text color, but I expect it will when we run the project. So let's do that. And yes, it did. So you now see here there's a toolbar at the top, which doesn't look a lot like a toolbar because it has no icons or anything. Um, almost could uh, function as a simple menu of sorts. But uh, there it is right at the top. And you've customized the look of your application uh, to make it look and feel the way you want. So as you can see, web styles and styles give you a great amount of control over the look and feel of your Real Studio web applications. Be sure to play around with them and give them a try so you can make your applications look and feel exactly how you want. I'm Paula Fever, the real software developer evangelist. Thanks for watching.